brilliant to be with you. So glad you could join us today in our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Today, our focus is praying for our buildings. And you might think, well, praying for our buildings, what's that going to do? Well, let me explain in a minute. My name's Mark and I'm part of the team here at Audacious. And um, last year, whilst in our 21 days of prayer, we also spent a day praying about our buildings. And if you're on our Manchester campus, you might be thinking, yeah, but nothing's happened. I've seen no holes in the ground. But it's not just simply about our Manchester building. It's about all of the facilities that we use and want to buy or purchase or lease in all of our other campuses. So we're going to quickly give you a little bit of a praise report. So the first thing to know is that Manchester is absolutely growing. We're seeing so many more people attend our church. We've got up to four services now and our building plan and project is as close as it's ever been to uh, start and it's very very exciting in manchester north the congregation is growing and we're still looking for new venues in manchester south again it's growing and we need a new venue in chester i want to give you a praise report since last year we have now had a bid accepted on a new property and are in, and are in the planning permission process for the change of use of that venue it's very exciting and it is a stunning venue cardiff the congregation's growing we'd love a new venue sheffield it's growing and we need a new venue geneva it's growing and last year i'm delighted to say we moved into a new venue that is the envy of all the other campuses it's absolutely stunning so i just need you to understand that since last year Stuff has been happening, the congregations are growing, and we are seeing movement in the area of buildings and land. Look, each of them, each of these campuses had seen its largest ever attendance since this time last year. God is on the move, and we can really, really see it. And your prayers have been part of this. The verse that I want us to focus on and take some principles and pray through today is this. It's in Philippians 1 verse 19 and it's Paul writing to the church in Philippi and he says this. Whilst he's in prison and I will continue to rejoice for I know that as you pray for me and the spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. Right. There's a few things we're going to look into there. You need to understand the context. The first thing is this. Paul is writing this whilst he's in prison in Rome. And he's writing it to the people of Philippi. Now, you may or may not know, but whilst Paul was in Philippi, he actually was imprisoned. And him and his friend Silas, in their prison, in at the middle of the night, started to pray and praise. And suddenly... The Bible uses that word suddenly. The doors flew open and they escaped from prison. They knocked on somebody's door and they were all very surprised that they were there. So he's writing to these people. But they also know that he has been imprisoned now in Rome for two years. They're sitting there thinking, hold on, hold on, hold on. We know that God does amazing things. He has miraculous powers and he has already released Paul from prison in our town in minutes. Why, when we've been praying, has he still not been released from prison? Well, that's up to God. But you need to understand that Paul's faith did never waver. Look it, and I will continue to rejoice. So he hasn't abandoned the principle he had before of praising before breakthrough. And that's something we must always do. But then this, for I know... I know that as you pray for me and the spirit of Christ Jesus helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. So he still has faith that he's going to be delivered. What is deliverance? What does it look like? Hmm. Think about this. When you log on to Amazon and you order something for a friend and suddenly you press return, click the mouse and what you wanted to order to bless somebody else, to fix a problem is ordered. And that's it. That's all your part of the process is. And then suddenly, Amazon, every DPD, Royal Mail, whoever, kick into action and what you ordered gets delivered to a different location. That's what Paul's deliverance was going to look like. He was saying, I'm going to be moved from this state of physical imprisonment to freedom. And if it's not the state of physical imprisonment, but the mental imprisonment of being here, I will still reside in freedom. And your prayers are part of this powerful weapon. You see, he knew this truth. 
between the promise and the fulfillment is patience. Once we get comfortable with knowing that God is in control of all things, including time, we can rest. The promise will come to pass in his perfect time. So we're not, we're not, we know that in the area of these buildings, God is on the move and he's up to something. But your prayers play a part of the delivery process from A to B, from vision to reality, in somebody's life from broken to whole. So what's our vision? Our vision is this, that in all our campuses, we will have buildings and venues that are the talk of the town, that they're large enough to show off and house what God is looking to do and doing, that they are magnets for people and they show off his glory. So we ask that you stand with us and pray for favour, insight, discernment, wisdom, finance for all of our campuses and locations and that we will see movement in the area of buildings, that we will move from a place of restriction and confinement to a place of expansion. It's going to happen, but your prayers play a massive part in this. So stand with me and pray for favour with councils, favours with finance, favour with land and building owners, favour with contractors, favour with people. And of course, we'd love you to apply the same principles to your life. If there's something you feel constricted and restricted by, remember, pray for it. Believe that God will turn up. God will deliver. You just got to be patient and wait and pray. Hey, God's a delivery specialist. He always delivers on time, but it's his time. Thanks for being with us, church. Pray your way through these. Pray for favour in our buildings, in every campus. And let's next year look back and see all of the incredible things that have been done. I'm going to pray for you just now that your life has changed this week, that God turns up and does something incredible. Father, I thank you for every person in our congregation. I thank you for every person in every campus. I thank you that you've called them, you've chosen them, you love them and you keep them. And Jesus, I pray today that whatever is going on in their lives, that there will be movement and momentum today towards transformation. There will be a step towards becoming more like you, that circumstances and situations will change as you turn up and do work your mighty, miraculous powers in their lives. Jesus, bless our congregation, we pray in your name. Amen. Love you guys. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye.